Bobcats, I'm Isabella Vanderlende, and welcome to another edition of GC360's new show, Cat Talk. Each month on Cat Talk, we spotlight an interview with a major newsmaker here at Georgia College, Milledgeville, or around the world. Our goal is to dig deeper into some of the topical issues that are shaping life here at GC and globally. This month, our guest is the president of Georgia College and State University, Kathy Cox. We'll also have a look at some stories that are making news this week, a look at the weather, and some fun questions and a game. Glad you guys could join us. Kathy Cox became the 12th president of Georgia College in October 2021, but this is not her first job at an institution of higher learning. She previously served as dean of Mercer University Law School and was president of Young Harris College for 10 years. She's an accomplished professional with a distinguished career in law, education, politics, and journalism. President Cox, thank you so much for coming in today and talking to us. I am incredibly honored to get to sit down and talk with you. Thank you for the invitation. Of course. Well. Um, so to start off, this is, as I just said, your third high-level administrative position at a university, um, having been the president of Young Harris and the dean at Mercer um, Law School. Um, and this being your second academic school year as president here, what do you find special or different about Georgia College? Well, how long do we have? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many th special things about this university. Um, and uh, having just gone through another big visitation Spring Fest weekend, um, it's been fun to tell visiting prospective students about all of those special things here. Uh, number one is our size, you know, for a university that has all the amenities you would ever hope for at a university. We have intentionally been designed as a small university, and that gives us in my view, a lot of advantages, uh, which I hope all of you students do <laughs> feel every day that you're in a classroom that is small. Uh, as you look around our campus, we don't even have rooms or lecture halls that would hold 200 students. So we just don't have that model of education here. And I think that's really important to the great liberal arts education that we offer. It's sort of the bedrock of the type of education that we offer our students. It's very high touch, very personal, but very engaging because in our view, the learning that we offer here, the learning opportunities are not just sit in a class and listen to a wise professor lecture, it's about learning from each other. And you can do that when you have a small class where you have discussions with your classmates and you can raise questions that cause you to think and process information. But you can't do that when you're in a big lecture hall of 100, 200, 300 students. So that's the real essence of what makes us extremely unique in the university system of Georgia. Yeah, I mean, I 100% agree. Um, that is definitely something that I have felt as a student here and I, thoroughly enjoy, honestly. Um, so during your time here, um, GC has been receiving several recognitions, most notably being ranked the number one nursing school in the state by increasedhealth.com and number seven top public schools regionally by US News and World Report. Um, what does this mean to you and um, what do you attribute this to? Well, I'm very proud of all these accolades that the university continues to earn. The rankings that we earn show the world that we're thought very highly of by our peers who rank us and vote for us in these kinds of rankings. But it also reflects on our student body because you students rock. I mean, I don't know what else <laughs> to say, but that really counts so much in how these rankings are earned. We just have great students. We attract really smart students because, as you know, there are only three universities in the state system that get to set high standards for admissions, UGA, Georgia Tech, and us. So we get the cream of the crop students, but that means when we can attract those kind of students for admissions, we have to offer something here that can really challenge those students. And so we offer programs that are not to come in and coast, but to really test and challenge students to do more. And we do that, I think, in all areas on our campus, from nursing, where we consistently have one of the highest pass rates on the NCLEX, the exam that nurses have mm -hmm. to take to get licensed, 
Uh, we embed leadership into our nursing programs in ways that I don't know anyone else in the university system uh, offers their students. We do so many different things to prepare our students to hit the ground running if they're going straight into the workforce or they're going on to graduate programs. And all of these kind of distinctive honors really reflect both the programs we're offering our students and the success of our students. So it makes me very proud. Yes. I, it makes me proud as well to say that I'm a student here and seeing all those different things. Um, but aside from um, as a whole university, um, you have accomplished a lot of things as president here at Georgia College. Out of all of those things, which would you say you are the most proud of? And what do you hope to continue to accomplish? Well, um, that's a hard question to <laughs> answer because I'm I'm proud that we're building a good team here. We have a good team of faculty and staff. Um, I'm having opportunities to hire and add to that almost every month that rolls around. We get new opportunities to enhance our team. So that makes that uh, a fun dynamic. Um, I'm excited that we're moving into a really fun strategic planning phase where I can encourage our faculty and staff to dream uh, we're, in fact, we're calling it Imagine 2030 because it's not that we have a crystal ball, but we're thinking about what you are going to need in 2030 and how can we help you prepare for the 2030 and beyond uh, career path that you're going to be headed into. I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm excited that we get to think about not just doing a good job today, but continuing to think about what's tomorrow and years ahead that we have to be doing for good students like you to get you ready to be successful and to be a leader for the next decades and beyond. So I think those kind of things are, are really operational in nature, but I think those are really exciting right. to me as sort of a nerdy president. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say that's nerdy. I think that that's um, definitely a great um, program to be launching. I think. A lot of students that I hear um, from my peers and my friends do, do have a little bit of that anxiety, um, thinking about, oh, what's next? What comes after this? How do I move forward into the professional space? So um, I think that's awesome, and I'm, I'm very happy and excited to hear that. Um, and, the, and the other part of that is, you know, I'm always excited when students tell me, I got a job, I got an internship, and you know, I'm a lawyer, and so I talk to a lot of students in particular about going to law school or journalism school, uh, things that I've done in my past, and so I have maybe a little more vested interest in those students, but all these students that are, are pursuing their dreams and when they get excited and share those goals with me, I think that's the best day ever. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear that. Um, well, moving forward from that, we have seen that there has been a little bit of a drop in enrollment, um, which in turn has also caused some budget issues and some budget cuts, I'm sorry. Um, how has that impacted and how could that continue to impact Georgia College? Well, I'm glad you asked that. So let me give you kind of a quick explanation because what we've experienced is a little bit different than what universities might typically experience when you talk about an enrollment decline. Typically, if, an en if enrollment goes down at a university, it's because there are systemic issues. Mm -hmm. You know, they might be in a region that is suffering an economic decline. They might not be offering programs that are popular to their uh, particular uh, marketplace. None of that really applies to <laughs> us. We've had two short-term hits to our enrollment. Number one was the pandemic, which everybody experienced, and we started coming out of that, and our enrollment started going back up when we got hit with the second short-term uh, whammy, which was the, the ACT-SAT decision mm -hmm. made by the university system or the Board of Regents, not intentionally, but the Regents a year ago decided that the three selective universities, Georgia, Georgia Tech, and us, should keep requiring SAT and ACT for admission. They allowed the other 23 schools to go test optional. Okay. And at the time they made that decision, Georgia and Georgia Tech had already made their class for fall of 22. We were in the middle of our recruiting cycle and we had a thousand students who had applied for us that had no test scores. 
and we lost every one of those thousand students. They went, a third of them went out of state, oh, wow. left the state of Georgia, despite the Hope Scholarship, yeah. left the state. We can track them. The others went to USG schools that did not require test. Mm. We lost every one of those because of the SAT requirement. Mm. But now they've waived that because they saw the impact. And so for fall of 23, we don't have that requirement and we are bursting at the seams. Glad to hear it. <laughs> applicants. We have the highest ever number of completed applications for next fall. We have the highest number of deposits heading into next fall. Mm -hmm. I, I'm beginning to wonder where we're gonna put all of these freshmen <laughs> <laughs> next year, but it's sort of proof in the pudding that we yeah. do not have those systemic issues that a lot of schools have. Nevertheless, the university system operates on a budget cycle that if you have a decline two years later, you feel the impact in your budget, no matter what the cause is. So we've made the argument to the university system that these were not long-term right. problems, so we shouldn't have to deal with this long-term cut to our budget. So we're waiting to see if we can kind of bridge this gap because we know our enrollment is going back up to maybe some of the highest levels ever. Even though we're not trying to be a growth school, we're definitely bouncing back from these two short-term issues. So I hope that the short-term budget pinch, I would say, we haven't had severe cuts, but the pinch we've felt will just be that, a short-term pinch that we'll get some relief from yes. soon. Yeah, well, that's a good news and good to hear. Um, um, we'll be right back from this break. Um, thank you for watching Cat Talk, our monthly talk show. And today's guest is GC360's own Kathy Cox. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Susie Parker. I'm a student docent over here at Andalusia Farms. Andalusia served as the home of the famed American author Flannery O'Connor from 1951 until 1964 of her passing at 39 years old. It was here that Flannery famously wrote and had all 32 of her short stories published. After her passing in 1964 though, the property was eventually entrusted with Georgia College and State University. It is now uh, our proudest achievement to say that we are the nation's newest national historic landmark. And on top of that, on March 25th, of 2023 we intend to open up our interpretive center and then ultimately return the entirety of the home back to how the O'Connors had it when they were here. There's a ton of stuff that college students can come and enjoy, especially as a Georgia College student. Not only are tours free, but the entirety of the property is free to roam. This is including the front porch in which we actually leave unlocked for people to come up, have a seat in the rocking chairs and maybe do like a study session. But even more so than that, we have a nature trail down by the pond, which is about two miles long. It is very, very beautiful. And we also have Aster and Mrs. Shortly, our peacock and peahen, who are pretty fun to visit as well. You're watching Cat Talk on GC360, where news comes full circle. I'm Jalen Brooks. We'll return to Bella and her guest, President Kathy Cox, shortly. But first, let's take a look at some stories that are making news around Georgia College in Milledgeville this week. It was a night of dancing and fun. Yes, the Spanish club held its first ever salsa night event at the Jalisco Mexican Grill recently. Students received lessons from an instructor on traditional Latin American dances, such as the meringue, muchacha, and salsa. The events helped raise funds for the operation of the club. Sound of the South is back. The annual music festival, sponsored by GC's WGUR, has not been held since 2019 due to the COVID pandemic. So last weekend was a big return. How did it go? And what were some of the bands that performed? Our reporter, Dana Hoffman, was there. <laughs> GCSU students from WGUR and the Milledgeville community came together to put on Sounds of the South last Friday, March 3rd. Local businesses such as Blackbird, Buffington's, Dungeons and & Daiquiri's, and Metropolis Cafe participated in this event by providing space for the bands to perform. This is the first time the music festival has occurred since the spring of 2019. Over 15 bands participated in this event, performing in five different businesses. 
Uh, I mean, Sounds of the South uh, had a great reputation uh, pre-COVID, and uh, we've been a part of it since the very beginning. So as soon as someone was kind of had the energy to bring it back, uh, we were on board from, from the second it was brought up. So it was kind of a no-brainer for us. We love it. The student that helped organize Sounds of the South this year was senior mass communications major Michael Marcinko. You know, I really wanted to have a music festival back here in Milledgeville. And I really want, and I had heard about it, and I really wanted to volunteer my freshman year and just didn't get the chance because of COVID. So I was like, okay, well, I don't think anyone else is going to make it happen. I'll make it happen. Something like this is perfect for, for Georgia College students to get themselves involved and have an event that happens in downtown Milledgeville. It actively gets the community involved. This event needed 40 volunteers. These were all university students that were selling wristbands, helping the band set up, as well as assisting in any other way. Uh, anything to bring the locals and the college students together downtown and enjoy the environment is going to be a good thing for the city. It's going to behoove the businesses. It's great for the community to get together to know each other and be an interactive park. The festival included a food truck, chalk art, and crafts. Overall, Sounds of the South was a success. There were lots of students and families attending the festival enjoying the music and activities together. Dana Hoffman, reporting for GC360. Time now for a look at the weather with Jennifer Martin. Jen? Thanks, Jalen. Today is a little cooler than usual with a high of 66 and a low of 51. Expect considerable cloud coverage all day with rain on the horizon. The showers are off and on in some areas with low humidity and light winds of five miles per hour. We'll see little to no wind and even more humidity tonight. Try to stay indoors or keep your umbrellas close by on Friday as there is a 90% chance of more rain. The downpour will hit early and continue into the cloudy afternoon. Temperatures will reach a humid 71 before plunging down to 41 as we go into the evening. Wind speed should stick to a light breeze at 5 to 10 miles per hour. For those bobcats traveling home this weekend, I'd recommend going Saturday, as that's when we'll get a short rest from these rain clouds. The high will peak at 67 in the afternoon and fall into the 40s at night. There's a small chance of evening showers, but it shouldn't put a damper on any celebrations. The gloomy weather will return Saturday, Sunday with a high chance of steady rain from morning into night. Temperatures will reach a high of 64 and shouldn't dip below 53 for that day. Going into next week, we can expect even more rain with a small break Wednesday before flipping back to showers until that weekend. That's it for weather this week. Back to you, Jalen. Up next, we get to know President Kathy Cox a little better as we talk about her long career in journalism, politics, and law. And President Cox and Bella play an interesting game of generational gap. You're watching Cat Talk. Hi, my name is Susie Parker. I'm a student docent over here at Andalusia Farms. Andalusia served as the home of the famed American author Flannery O'Connor from 1951 until 1964 of her passing at 39 years old. It was here that Flannery famously wrote and had all 32 of her short stories published. After her passing in 1964 though, the property was eventually entrusted with Georgia College and State University. It is now uh, our proudest achievement to say that we are the nation's newest National Historic Landmark. And on top of that, on March 25th, of 2023 we intend to open up our interpretive center and then ultimately return the entirety of the home back to how the O'Connors had it when they were here. There's a ton of stuff that college students can come and enjoy, especially as a Georgia College student. Not only are tours free, but the entirety of the property is free to roam. This is including the front porch in which we actually leave unlocked for people to come up, have a seat in the rocking chairs and maybe do like a study session. But even more so than that, we have a nature trail down by the pond, which is about two miles long. It is very, very beautiful. And we also have Aster and Mrs. Shortly, our peacock and peahen, who are pretty fun to visit as well. Another really fun thing that a lot of people like to come to Andalusia for is for photography. Not only of, you know, photography of the forestry and things like that, but we've had several weddings out here um, that have had their photos done. But on top of that, this is a wonderful and beautiful place for Georgia College seniors to come and have some of their portraits done. And it's very fitting that it's here on site with Georgia College.
This is Cat Talk. I'm Isabella Vangelende. President Cox is our guest today. Um, moving forward from um, a lot of the Georgia College questions um, and more personal questions, you are an incredibly accomplished woman that many people, including myself, genuinely look up to and admire. Um, most notably, you were Georgia, Georgia's Secretary of State and you were the first woman to do so. Um, what challenges would you say you had to face as a woman, not only in politics, um, but also as a lawyer and in the academic world? Um, well, I, I, I'm happy to say I'm a survivor, but um, I'm, I'm glad that there were a lot of women who had really harder times than me. Um, many of our students may not know that just around the corner from us, behind the old governor's mansion, uh, one of our closest neighbors, Miss Louise Florencourt, was in the class of the first women lawyers at Harvard Law School ever. Wow. Uh, and she's still our neighbor around the corner. My class of law school had about a third of the class were women. Um, and law firms were getting used to hiring women, but when I went back home to practice law in my hometown of Bainbridge, it was a big deal because I was the first woman to practice law in about 11 counties in southwest oh, Georgia. Wow. So I so used you're to just shattering glass ceilings <laughs> well, everywhere. <laughs> I used to joke that people would say, "Let's go down to the courthouse and watch that lady lawyer and see if she's <laughs> going to cry when the judge yells at her." Of course. Um, because people just hadn't seen it. So I, I lived through a lot of those experiences where people just wanted to watch because mm -hmm. they they either didn't believe it could happen or didn't know what to expect. When I first ran for political office, I would have people in very patronizing ways kind of say, isn't this cute that you're running yeah. for office, you know, yeah. and pat me on the head, <laughs> never thinking that I would win yeah. because never thinking that they, mostly yeah. men, were not gonna vote for me or th didn't think anybody else would vote for me, never thought I could win. Um, and, and in a way, that sort of just fired me up to say, I, I'll show you. Oh, yeah. um, and so I won those elections. And, and then, to me, the better victory maybe was being able to run for my second term in the House without opposition, oh, yeah. uh, the Georgia House of Representatives, because I thought, well, I've maybe persuaded people that women can do these jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and as a lawyer practicing in South Georgia, where no women had ever practiced before, to have the hospital hire me as their counsel, or to have a bank hire me as their counsel, to have people hire me when nobody had hired a woman to do these kind of things. Um, I just had to plow through those things to show people that women can do these things as well as men. When I ran for Secretary of State, there had never been a woman running for that office, never a woman serving in that office, and many people would tell me on a weekly basis they did not think a woman could do the job. And I would say it does not involve heavy lifting, <laughs> uh, by the way, but yeah. I, I just had to keep plowing forward and help people understand that it, it's a job of intellect, not physical structure, although there are plenty of jobs that women can physically do as well as men. But um, I'm glad to have broken through those barriers and hopefully help yeah. people no longer ask a lot of those questions. Oh, yeah. well, from woman to woman, thank you for paving the way for some of us. Um, and kind of on that same topic, what would be the biggest piece of advice you have for young women, especially those here at Georgia College? Well, I'm so proud of the women here at Georgia College. I'm, I'm really in awe of all of the, the goals they set for themselves and the things they want to do with their lives. And I guess my advice would be just to follow your dreams and follow your passion. Um, don't let anyone else set barriers for you. Uh, because unfortunately, I hate to say here in 2023, we still have a society that quite often does put barriers and set restrictions around the goals that women set for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I hope that our women students will never let anybody else do that for them. They can accomplish anything they want to, they can do anything that they set their minds to do. They are just as capable as any man, anywhere, anytime, and they need to just set those things aside and remember that anyone who ever might suggest that they shouldn't do something is operating under some other agenda than their own best interest, and they just need to plow through and follow their dreams. Well, thank you so much. That is very inspirational, and I'm very um, 
happy to hear that advice from you. Um, we're going to move along from the questions and the hard stuff, and we're gonna move along to a little game um, that we are calling Generational Gap. <laughs> this could so, be embarrassing. <laughs> no, it, I'm, it might be embarrassing for me. <laughs> but um, we're going to put up pictures of um, famous people and celebrities from today's day and age, from my generation, and then um, for you to guess, and then in turn, we're gonna put up pictures from celebrities from your generation, from when you were around my age, and I'm gonna try to guess them. <laughs> okay. And we'll try not to embarrass ourselves. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What do we have first? Oh. <laughs> no. Oh, this is for me. Oh, this is Lady Gaga. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Too easy. What? Wait, do you know who that is? It looks a lot like Lady Gaga to that me. That looks like Lady Gaga to me. I think we're looking at a different picture. <laughs> what? They're saying it's David Bowie. No. Really? I don't know. I don't see David Bowie in that. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> okay. This is an easy one. I don't know. No? <laughs> it's Kylie Jenner. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You're not, not, not big into the Kardashian Jenners? I'm not. <laughs> I'm proud to say I'm not. That's okay. All right, moving on. Okay, Madonna, easy. I got that one. Yes. I'd be embarrassed if I didn't get that. <laughs> okay. No idea. <gasps> really? I recognize him. Any guesses? No. Timothy Chalamet. No. Oh, he's very popular with the ladies. <laughs> I can understand why. <laughs> Heard it here first. Kathy Cox thinks Timothy Chalamet is attractive. <laughs> All right, moving on. Ah, ro uh, Rob, Rob Lowe? <laughs> thought I was going to get that one wrong for a second. All right. Next one. Okay. Oh, I know her. She's been around for a few years yeah. now. Oh, my goodness. I know her. Starts with an A, if that helps. Her initials are A, G. Ariana Grande. Yes! Good job, yes. President Cox. <laughs> That is all the time we have for today. Um, we've been talking with President Cox here at um, GC360, and thank you so much for coming in to talk to us. It has been an absolute honor. I'm Isabella Vanderlende, and this is Cat Talk.